Hello everyone, Hakuna Matata to you. It's Saturday, July 11, and I'm gonna share with you today how I diagnosed my starter problem. Now, for some of you guys, this will be really basic stuff, but I'm sure there's a few people out there that'll get something out of this. So, uh, let me first, this is a starter, I've already taken it out of the bus. Let me first give a quick explanation of how this thing works. This is the motor. There's gears in here, and this is the Bendix here that it spins freely in one direction, but, but not in the other. So what that's for is when this thing cranks up the engine, there's going to be a moment where the engine is going to be spinning faster than this starter wants to go. And so this is like a clutch, and it lets this thing slip without trying to make the motor over speed. Okay? So this way, this force in this direction is what's cranking the engine. As soon as the engine cranks, this will slip, and then you let your finger off the key. Uh, well, I forgot to mention, when you go to crank mode, this thing right here, which is the starter solenoid, is like an electromagnet, if you will. There's a coil of wire in here, and when you apply power to this, it pulls in. There's a lever in here, and that pushes this gear out. And when the gear is fully out, and this thing comes all the way back, it makes contact between this terminal and this terminal. And this is like an electric switch. This is connected directly to the batteries. No fuses or anything, okay? The positive terminal on the battery is what's connected here. And then when that plunger comes all the way back, there's a contact in there that's squeezed and it makes contact inside on this, and this sends the power to the motor through this wire, and it goes into the motor right there. That's all there is to it. It's just a simple electric motor, and this is kind of like a remote control switch, if you will, the relay, right? And you know what? I think I'll try and see if I can show you how this works with a pair of jumper cables. Um, I can put a ground on here, and then put positive on here and you'll see this thing energize and push that thing out. Um, I don't think I want to go so far. Well, I'll see. Maybe maybe I, I will actually hook power to this as well and then the motor will spin up. So it'll do everything all at once. So the problem I was having, um, when I first bought the bus, it would do it on very rare occasion you would go to crank and you would hear a heavy clunk, but it wouldn't crank. And you'd let off on the key and then try again and it would crank and it would crank normally. And then it would crank normally f for, you know, months, never be a problem. And then only once in a while it would do that. It would crunk and you think, uh oh, dead battery or something, right? And let go and go again and it cranks normally. So I suspected that we had a faulty starter solenoid here because the, the clunk was kind of a heavy clunk and you can kind of, I mean, I recognize the sounds, so maybe I'm just being presumptuous here, but I could tell that the clunk sounded like the heavy weight of this gear clanking and engaging with the flywheel of the engine, okay? So I had been suspecting that sound represented that activity and I had been suspecting the problem has been in here and I'd just been living with it. And uh, as of late, we've got the bus. There you go. You guys have probably seen it before. Bus is in great shape on the outside. The insides are still pretty much uh, gutted in there. But we've been using the bus on rare occasion to take a trip to Home Depot or something. You know, so if I need to get something large, I don't have to hook the trailer up behind my car. I'll just take the bus. And the other day we bought some furniture and just loaded it up in the bus because, right, it's empty in the back. You open the back door and you slide the stuff in. So anyway, as of late, the problem with the faulty starter solenoid, suspected, had gotten bad. It would be like five or six times, clock, 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 nothing until it cranked. So now I'm at the point where, you know what, I ain't getting stuck and paying a huge towing bill or trying to exercise my towing insurance. So um, 
you know what? I said, we're going we're gonna to diagnose this thing first and be absolutely certain what's happening. So here's the tool that I use to diagnose it. This is an old buzzer uh, from, Jesus, like 1970s era uh, seatbelt warning. Let me hook this up to my lawnmower battery here, and, and you'll see when you hear it that you might recognize the sound. Okay. So you put power on those two outer terminals, and you get a buzz, so to speak. And I also proved that if you reverse the polarity, it works in both directions. It's not an electronic buzzer. It's a mechanical buzzer. All right, so here's what we did. I took a long wire, and I connected it to one of these alligator, or a different wire with an alligator clip. And then I hooked that to this terminal, like so. Well, I can't do that without really paying attention. All right. So uh, it, it wasn't this exact wire, but for all intents and purposes, right? We hook one side of the buzzer to that terminal. Now this terminal doesn't get power until the starter motor gets power. So what I was trying to verify was that when this thing was going clunk and not cranking, was the starter, starter solenoid actually working and the motor was faulty? Because maybe there's bad connection on the, the commutator in here, right? Or was it actually the starter solenoid? So um, inside the, I, I put a, a long wire here, not this one. And then inside the bus, I took this wire and to make sure that I had my connection all good and everything, I hooked this to a positive and the buzzer would buzz. All right, so what was happening there, the positive power however you want to think about which way electricity flows, okay? The positive power was going through this wire, going through this buzzer, going through the green wire, going into this terminal, and which is connected to this wire. Okay? Connected to this wire and going into the motor, it, the wires are... Uh, Go, the electricity was going through the motor and to the ground where this thing's bolted to the engine block. And that made the buzzer buzz. All right? You with me on that? The power was going from positive through this wire, through this wire, through the motor, and then to ground. And it buzzed. So what that did is it told me that my buzzer was connected and everything uh, had a good connection in my buzzer circuit. So now we work this thing in the opposite direction, so to speak. I went in the cab of the vehicle. Oh, sorry, hold on. I connected this to ground. All right, so now the buzzer is not buzzing because it's a ground on this side of the buzzer and it's a ground through the motor. So there's a ground or a negative or a minus on both sides of this thing. It would be the same thing as hooking these two wires together on the same terminal. It was like doing nothing, more or less, okay? Except for the resistance in the motor, which is really, we're not gonna get into that. So then I hooked this wire to a ground, okay? So now my buzzer is looking for positive power on this green wire this time, okay? So positive, this will turn positive power from the battery through the solenoid when you go to crank. So I went to crank and just the way all things go, the moment I cranked it, it worked. And the starter started to crank and the buzzer started to buzz. So then I just did it for a moment. And then I said, all right, well, let me hope that this thing's actually going to fail while I'm testing it. And lo and behold, the second, third, and like fourth time, when I hit the starter, it went clunk, and it did not crank, and I did not hear the buzzer. So that means this thing was actually moving, engaging the gear, but no electrical power was going through here. So now the real fix for this would be just replace place this solenoid. I checked it. I did a search for this uh Series 29 MT Doko Remy 
clockwise rotation 12 volt starter and I found uh, somewhere with a uh, this is the part number of the starter I verified that by doing searches and then I uh, landed on the Delco Remy website and it identified the proper solenoid for me and gave me a number that looks something like this for the solenoid. Then I did a Google search for that part number and I found it on a few different places and Amazon is one of them and there's one seller with prime shipping. So if there's nothing uh, right about it or something's wrong with it rather, uh, I can send it back for free. So um, now that I know I can get the part, uh, and it's easy to get. I'm going to rebuild the starter. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, uh, I'm, I'm going to see if I can take this solenoid apart. I know I can remove the solenoid from the starter, but I don't know that I can pull the back cap off. It looks like it might be permanently affixed in there by these squeeze marks. And I'm not going to try to drill that out. I mean, if I can pull this out and it's only held in by these nuts, then I will. See, it looks like these little notches right here are like stops that hold where um, this is holding in something. But what's holding this in, uh, it might be more than these. So if I can get this apart, it might be as simple as filing on the contact point in there and maybe bend the little bar. There's a, there's a copper bar that's a spring that the plunger pushes back on. And, it, and when the, this thing comes all the way back, it the bar kind of does one of these numbers. It pushes and it causes a, a, a little bit of a wipe action. Every time the contact points, it, they don't just come in straight. They're, it's very slight, but they, they touch and put and, and rub a little bit and it, it's how it cleans itself. This butts, busts sat a lot of times, so there could be like crud buildup in there, who knows what, but all right, I've rattled on long enough. Let me see if I can do a quick test here with my lawnmower battery and show you guys how the starter functions. All right, so we're gonna give this a shot. I didn't test anything to see if this is actually gonna work. It should. So that lawnmower battery has got plenty of power to run this motor, uh, but it certainly does not have enough power to crank that big old engine in there. So here's what we got. We've got the jumper cables hooked to the starter. I put the starter in the vise so I don't have to worry about this thing jumping around when it starts to move. I've got my positive, oops, sorry, hooked on here and that ought to be a good enough connection. And we're not shorting out on anything. There's a little piece of plastic right here. So uh, let's te test our buzzer. So we're gonna hook the buzzer to ground right here. And we can take this green wire and touch it to positive. It's just on the stud here. So we got a good connection from this to the stud and we know the ground is good and everything. So I'm gonna hook this on here. And the reason why it's not buzzing now is because this solenoid has not pulled in. Um, oh, so yeah, let me tell you, show you what I did on the other test. You remember I said I hooked this up first and then I hooked this to positive. So what's happening right here, just like I said before, the power is coming from the positive, going through the buzzer, and now it's looking for a ground and it's finding a ground through the, the motor. It's not going into the solenoid. It's going right through that wire into the motor, through the brushes on the motor, on the commutator, in one brush and then out the other brush. And the other uh, brush has got an internal ground on here, okay? So that's what I did to test that the circuit from this stud all the way through here was good. So now we're gonna put this back on the ground. All right, if I can just 
find a good ground. I guess it was good enough where it was. I don't want it falling off. Hold on a second. All right, there we go. There's our ground. Now let's just check this one more time. All right, we got a good ground. So now, got another jumper wire. This little stud right here is what gets power when you go to the crank mode. Right there. So if I put power on that, power's gonna go through the coil and this to ground back to the battery and it's gonna pull this guy in. And if it's working correctly, it's gonna make a clack. The gear's gonna extend and the motor's gonna run. It would be really, really cool if this thing happens to fail on this test and it just goes clack. The gear extends and the motor doesn't run. But Murphy's Law, it's probably gonna work perfectly, right? So let's see, you ready? Oh, it failed. There it goes. You see? The motor should run every time. All right. So maybe I saw some little sparking over here. Maybe that is got something to do with it. Okay, so this has failed internally. It's not making the electrical connection. Um, we would hear the buzzer buzz, and it's not buzzing. I don't even remember. I got so kind of tied up in what I'm doing here. Did it buzz the one time it did run? The voltage actually, uh, that little battery may be struggling to run this big motor. I did not hear this thing buzz. Um, it may be, the voltage may be dropping down uh, too low. I just happen to have some six volt bulbs. Even though this is a 12 volt starter, Let's try this again with this six volt bulb. Hold on. Okay, here we go again. Now, instead of the buzzer with the yellow and the green wire, I've got this little light bulb. And uh, hopefully it's not gonna take a hundred times, but the light bulb um, should illuminate when the motor runs. There we go. Now it's not going to fail. I actually, I did nothing here except disconnect the buzzer and hook the light bulb up. So it's, it's a temperamental. There it is. It's, it's extended the gear. The motor should be running. The light bulb should be on and it's not. Okay. There's not a doubt in my mind and yours too, hopefully that this starter solenoid is faulty. All right. So that's a success. We know for certain that we need a monkey with this thing. Let me unhook my battery before I make some smoke. <clears throat> there you go. <clears throat> All right. So now next order of operation is we're going to start disassembling the starter. And I'll come back when we're making some progress on that. All right. So... This starter is, you know, looks pretty clean, right? But it's a little grimy right there. So the first thing I'm going to do, I want to clean this up before I start to take it apart. I mean, there's a little bit of crud around there. And, uh, you know, so I got some mineral spirits. This is paint thinner. Just regular old paint thinner, right? It's mineral spirits. And I, this is just a standard tw uh, one inch wide paint brush. And if you want to make good, good scrubbing brush out of that, you just cut the bristles off and scrub this thing a little bit. 
All right, and then I'll, I'll wash it off with the hose. I'm gonna take the whole starter apart, so I'm not worried about getting a little bit of water in there. And the reason why I'm doing that is because, you know, hey, I already got the thing off. I mean, that was kind of a pain. And uh, I'm gonna take it apart, inspect it. Gotta be nothing wrong with it, because it works, right? But uh, I wanna make sure it's got plenty of grease on, the, on the, all the bearings and stuff in there. And then just put it right back together. I mean, I've rebuilt tons and tons of starters in my youth. So this is not a thing at all for me. And you know what? If, if something is, is not right in it, I'll find it. And then I'll just put the whole thing back together again and trade it in for a rebuilt or just buy a brand new one. I think you can buy a brand new one for 300 and change. Uh, okay, sorry about that. I got a phone call. And I uh, just continued to work on that while I was talking. So first thing I'm going to do here, because it did come out really good. Maybe I won't use the garden hose on it. Oopsie. Switch is on. It's just... Me. All right, wonderful. All right, so now, now we'll take this nut off, pull this wire out of the way, take two, these two screws out and see if we can pull this guy out. If it doesn't, if it, I think what it does, it just kind of comes out of a groove. There's like a button at the end of the rod there. Uh, so let me get into that and I'll be right back. All right, so we got this guy off. Uh, something you need to know too, th these are brass. So you gotta be careful when you tighten these, they, even though this is the, like a 3 8 diameter and that's uh, like an eight millimeter or like a 5 16 diameter. Uh, you gotta be careful that you don't over tighten those things and break them. So, let's see if we're going to be able to do this one-handed here. There. Here's the gasket. Let's see if we can pull this thing out of its slot. I don't know exactly how it's configured in there. We may have to take the starter apart in order to get this out. Let me play with it some. All right, let me let you in on what I'm doing here. I put a screw back in this just to hold this thing so we don't like drop parts on the ground. I flipped this up and I clamped it in the vise this way and I took out these two long bolts And I'm not going to pull this cap off because this is where the brushes are underneath here and they're going to snap shut and uh, I just don't want to dark around with that. I want to be easy on that. I'm going to turn this thing over and pull the nose off if I can. And uh, I guess it really doesn't matter which end I take off. I'm still going to have to pull this cap off anyway. All right, let's just do it. Let's see if it'll... All right, the motor's, the motor's lifting. Okay, all right, cool. It's separated from the, uh, the gear cluster. There's a little gasket, O-ring looking thing right there. Let me just set this down carefully. All right. There's a planetary gear set that uh, could use some more grease. All right, this is exactly why I'm taking it apart. So if I'm fortunate enough to be able to do all this without breaking anything. Um, yep. uh, so that's that. Um, probably we can pull this little rubber piece out and that'll help us to take this out and all the, the drive and all that. I sh should be able to get this out of there. 
because I'm pretty sure it all comes out of that end. Might have to take a screw off the end here. I'm not sure, but uh, this is how it works. When the motor spins, it causes this thing to spin. These planetary gears, like that, and these pins transfer rotational force onto the carrier down there, way down in there. And that is what's driving the gear down here. Pretty cool. So I think that's like a two to one reduction. I don't know for sure, but all right. So um, let's take a look at this. I'm glad the motor didn't come apart. Hopefully the mineral spirits didn't harm this little O-ring. Okay. So we're going to uh, thoroughly go through this. Now, if you guys want to know more about how these things work, this is the rotor, if you will, or the armature. And electrical power, high current flows through these wires, which are the windings on the, the armature. And they're hooked in a, um, I don't know exactly how to explain how these are hooked up to the commutator down there, but we'll see that in a little bit. But uh, each one of these goes to opposite sides of the commutator. And there's like a twist in how the wires are in this armature. The commutator is where the brushes rub on the electrical contacts of these wires. So the high power from the battery goes through the brushes, goes through these wires, out the other brush and to the ground, um, sort of. I'm pretty certain this is a series wound motor, which means one of the brushes hooks to these poles and these become magnets as the current flows through these. Uh, so the, the power really runs, we'll see in a minute that this is a, a series wound or a parallel round motor. Power runs through this, through a brush, through these windings, through the other brush, through these windings, and then the ground. All right. Ooh, look at this little pin right here. Glad I didn't lose that little alignment pin. I'm going to set it right there for now. All right, so uh, let's see if we can take some more of this apart. Okay, check this out. These are just sitting there, and they're being held in place just by the mere fact that they're there. And this guy, you see that line right there? This presses up against these heads right here, these pins, and keeps that assembly down in there when this is installed, however direction this thing goes. I guess, oh, that's what it is. When this is bolted in place, that rubber is getting squeezed down, right? So this is what holds those little guys. Now check out how cool those little gears are in there. They got needle bearings. They're not bushings in there, they're needle bearings. Look at that. All right, so I'm not gonna mess around with this too much because I don't wanna change the orientation of any of these, have one of them upside down or something and then it's rotating the other direction. Uh, I just don't think that's a good idea. Um, so we're gonna leave that. Um, this is, I mean, it, it's not like it's nasty, it's clean. It just needs a little bit more grease in there. Um, so, something I learned about lubrication. There's different types of grease. What their base is, the, the, the liquid part. There's like paraffins, waxes, soaps, and all kinds of stuff that they use to make up grease, graphites, and all kinds of different kinds of grease. I don't know what kind of grease this is. Um, I would guess it's just like wheel bearing grease, plain old grease. Um, so that's what I'm gonna go with. Um, but I kind of don't wanna mix my, my grease with this grease. Uh, you know, it's kind of splitting hairs, but um, Maybe I will take this completely apart and completely degrease it 
and put fresh grease in the whole thing. Uh, I do want to get this apart. Um, so I'll show you what I found. If I can do this without dumping it on the ground. Here. There's a, a little snap ring in there at, on that nose piece that if you, I don't want to let go of this thing. You come over to the table, uh, table saw. Up inside there, there's a snap ring. But remember, you gotta push this back and it'll expose that. And you just pry that out and then the gear will come off. And then I think the guts of that will all come out. Uh, in case you're wondering, I've never taken apart one of these starters before, <laughs> but I've taken apart a few others. So I found out you can remove this, like I suspected. I'll clean that later. And there's a spring in there. And now maybe I can get this thing out. So let me, let me try that for a while. Okay, we got it. There's a little fork, right? And you just have to get the thing out from around it. And this is the end of the plunger. Okay, that is what goes around that. Let me show you. I don't think anything will fall out here. So you just have to kind of wiggle it around and get it. Well, I need two hands to do it, okay? Sorry. But that's how it goes. All right. Um, I think I may not be able to disassemble this without making a special tool or something because I can't get that snap ring off the nose, uh, at least cursory looking at it. I really do want to get this thing re-greased up in the bearings in there um, because there's one more bearing in here, bushing bearing uh, that this is riding on. I mean, it doesn't feel like it's worn or anything, but um, it would make me feel good if I could re-grease it. So this is the part I got to replace or fix. So we're going to try to fix it uh, before I buy a new one. I'm going to clean the grease off and start taking these screws off the back and see if I can get the electrical switch part removed from this without destroying it completely. And uh, I'll come right back to you. All right, it's uh, not coming apart willingly. What I can tell you is that these are not nuts on here. This is a bolt on both sides. It's a bolt. So I'm pretty sure that, where'd you go? Here it is. I lifted this little tang up and you can see that the thread stopped short of that hex. So um, what I'm getting ready to tell you is I'm pretty sure since you've got to tighten a nut on this to connect, this one connects to the starter motor and this one connects to the battery cable. Um, these are made to where they won't turn. That in this plastic, there's probably like a big square piece or something in there and then there's a nut on this side. I pulled as hard as I could to see if I could pull this thing out now that I've got these two screws out of here. And I tried turning it, and when I turn it, it feels like it's ripping the wires out of it. Like maybe this is soldered on after it's installed. And these two wires right here are what's holding this from coming apart, which means I may have already damaged it because I already turned it a little bit. Um, that would be really weird if that's the way this thing is made. Let me, geez, I would hate to think I got to unsolder that damn thing. So I'm going to play with it a little bit more. I mean, I'm already ready to buy a whole new solenoid anyway. I was just hoping I could just disassemble it and clean the contacts, put it back together and be done. So let me work on it a little bit more. 
All right, so before I completely destroy this thing, uh, I was pulling on this again a little bit, and it really does feel like the conductors are what's holding this thing from coming apart. Um, so I'm gonna give it a go and see if I can undersolder those. But before I did that, I wanted to show you um, how this thing is functioning. And if, I don't know, I could feel it, but I don't know if you guys could hear it. You could hear, right? This thing clicks when it goes in that far, but watch this a little bit further. See that last little bit? Yeah, let me put it in a vise. Hold on. That last, that's where, right from there to there, that's where the electrical contacts do their thing in the back of this. Okay, uh, I was right. Um, you have to unsolder this thing to take it apart. So there's the two wires that make up the electromagnet. It's the coil down up in there. All right. And you can see this thing here is all like fried over there. So evidently, I think what's happened is this thing kind of like works its way around. Um, it's probably designed to where this thing rotates um, every time you use it. And it'd be fine when it was in this spot, but then when it worked its way around to that spot right there, then it wasn't doing its thing, making a good contact. And there's the two points that it touches on. It ain't much. You see that little contact point right there? And that one is a little bit corroded looking. Now, if I was stranded somewhere, I'd clean this off. And uh, I'd put it back together. Let's see if I can do something here. Okay, I can. So, when... Hold on. Okay, I'm going to see if I can do this with one hand now. Remember when I was showing you earlier how I was depressing this thing in and then there was a little bit extra? And that little extra was where the electrical contacts were doing, doing their thing? Well, uh, I got to take back what I said uh, on how this thing is designed. Ones I've seen before, it's just... Uh, a bent piece of metal that you make um, break a contact. All right, this thing's a circular ring, and that that last little bit of spring movement was this right here. This has its own spring right there. So you know for sure this was getting pressed firmly by. Um, how I was showing you, the, the electromagnet is pulling that thing in really hard. And, you know, it's actually making contact. But all the all this is like eight up here. So, I mean, I could probably buff that clean. I mean, I can actually feel there's like a low spot right there. These are little tits here or a little bit higher. Um, but for 50 bucks... To buy another one of these i'm just buying another one guys all right but i did my boy scout best to see if i could fix that and i can't uh to my satisfaction also there was um there's a little rubber seal on this thing right here that's kind of it's it's had it right it's split right there right so i mean if i did put this back together i'd have to glue this thing in there with rtv and this is broke and that's just from i don't know it's nothing i did i'm certain of it i mean if i had to i could put this back together without this piece or super glue this back in there uh like back in the old days when i was poor uh young dumb and full of fun and other things i would uh i would just put this clean this up and put it back together but um, I can afford 50 bucks and 
I don't want to have to pay a thousand dollars or upwards there to get this beast towed all because of me trying to save 50 bucks. So we're replacing the solenoid and uh, yeah, there you go. I'm still going to try to take this motor apart, uh, pull the back cap off or pull the rotor out of it and uh, see I'm not really certain what the right order of operation is to disassemble this without breaking anything. Probably going to have to take those screws off the back as part of it, but I want to make sure I get that back bearing lubed. And, uh, yeah. I guess what I'll do... This is really, there's really nothing wrong with any of this. Just the contacts in the solenoid. I'm going to uh, try a little harder to see if I can get this apart. And uh, then I could thoroughly lubricate uh, the bearing on the other side of this. And uh, then we'll be ready to reassemble this when my new parts get here. Okay. I've got this thing figured out. It's, it's like I remember. It's just a little bit different design than, than the Chevrolet cars and stuff I worked on back in the day. When you push this down, see how it, it exposes that snap ring there? I mean, the snap ring is already, you know, kind of sprung a little bit. For final assembly, it's got to be compressed and then this collar comes over it and then there's like no way anything can come apart. Uh, so what I did is I put a socket in the vise so I can press on the right piece. And my problem is I can push down on it, but I need two more hands. So what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to try to do something here like this, do this bolt. And then kind of, I don't know. Well, it's not pushing down on that actually. I, I, need to, I need to make something that goes around this and push down on the gear. Okay. So I got this piece of aluminum. I was thinking about drilling a hole this size and then put a couple holes out here somewhere where I can I don't know, ratchet strap or just pieces of threaded rod or something. So I can pull down on this, pop that little snap ring out of here. Then I can take this gear out. Then I can get the guts out the other side, fully clean and fully grease this thing and put it back together. That's the only thing that's holding me up. I'm sure there's a like really great special tool that the Delco Remy guys have, but uh, that I don't. So we're going to do this the hard way. Got it. Um... So there's the little snap ring, all right? And that goes inside that little groove you see there when this is depressed in, all right? So we could take these pieces off, one. And there's the gear, it's on a spline. And there's the spring that I'm pushing against to do that operation. All right, I already had this off. So what's back there, it's not a bushing. It's, it's what I'd hoped it would be, a ball bearing. It's a regular 6204 or something, ball bearing. All right, and you can see a little bit of grease has been slung out from this mechanism. Okay, so I can clean this and repack that bearing or not repack that bearing. I'm looking at, there's a, there's a seal. Looks like there's a seal right there. Maybe, kind of hard to tell. I'll have to clean that up. Okay, so, all right, so here's, well, there's the fork. I would have liked to have not have fallen off. And there's the Bendix. 
So he's got that helical gear, helical spline, I guess you'd call it. That helps to throw the gear out, the inertia from the motor start. Okay. So that looks, that's fairly well greased in there. And it does look like wheel bearing grease. Now, right here behind my thumb, it's a, it's a clutch. Uh, you can call it a sprag clutch. But there's pins in it. I'm not going to take that apart. I don't think that's disassemblable. I think that's crimped shut right there. So what's inside that is um, rollers that um, there's, there's going to be, let's say there's four of them. They're angled slots. Okay. And there's a roller in the slot with a spring pushing the roller up against another part. So when you rotate that way, for example, the roller just slips. But when you rotate the other way, it locks or whatever, one way or the other. And so it acts like a one-way clutch. And it, it seems to be working fine. Uh, I know you heard when those go bad, you can hear someone when they're cranking their car, they'll crank it and it like sounds like gears grinding and clacking and all that. Sometimes it's that thing slipping. Sometimes you'll hear it just like spin and then grab. I mean, that doesn't work kind of shit when those things go bad, but all this is looking good. So I'm happy about that. I mean, it's like brand new, really. Let me clean up that. And uh, I'm just going to wipe that clean with a mineral spirits towel. And uh, yeah, that's a rubber seal in there. So I'm going to be really careful not to dork that up. Um, I'm probably just going to that bearing you can see it's staked one two three four five those six points um when they installed that bearing they took something and it kind of bends the the edges of the metal down so that bearing can't come out uh, on its own you can you can press it out but then you got to restake it in different places because the aluminum will crack um probably the best thing to do is to not even mess with that bearing is just to wipe this out wipe this off, grease it up, put all those things back, and uh, wait for the new part to get here. I sure am glad I took the initiative to take this part out. This thing is needing some love, man. Look how nasty that looks. So let's see what kind of motor this is. Okay, there's four brushes. All right. This brush is connected to this frame, which is screwed to the housing. So that's the ground. So we go through that to this one. Oh, wait a minute. No, this one's a ground also. Yeah, there's two ground brushes. Sorry. All right. That one and that one is ground. So, this one brush here is connected directly to that. And that brush going to the field poles so it is a series wound motor or is that series I don't know I'd have to think about that but all right I'm not gonna mess with this I mean the commutator is that thing down in there with the segments and that looks good enough to not mess with. I mean, it wouldn't hurt to hit it with some emery paper, but to do that, I gotta take out all the brushes. I don't think I wanna mess with it, but I do wanna closely examine that bearing. I can clean this out. The seal is okay. 
All right, so I got this guy cleaned up. That was a lot of nasty stuff there. It's probably residue from the brushes. This bearing is sealed. And it looks like it's in good shape. What is that, a 6200 or something? All right, I mean, it's smooth. All right, so I'm not gonna mess with that. I'm not gonna mess with the commutator. I made a mistake when I took this apart. I should have put witness marks, a scratch or a pen mark with a Sharpie so I know which way it goes back together. I kind of goofed. Uh, this can go in two positions, this cover can. Uh, and what it, the difference is, um, I don't know about internally, I don't think there's any difference, but there's these, oops, sorry. There's these three notches here that are apparently drains. So this thing, if any water gets in it, it can drain out the bottom. So I need to make sure that's the bottom. When this gasket is in there, it'll seal all the way around, but those drains are little open channels. So I gotta figure that out. Um, yeah, which won't be hard. I mean, I got this red paint. So, I mean, one side's got paint on it and the other side doesn't. So that might be all I need. But I'm gonna put this thing together. I got this all cleaned up nice and, I pretty much just wiped it out. This I cleaned with solvent, but the rest of it I just wiped so as to not like wash out any grease that's down up in there because I'm not able to take that apart. Um, there is a snap ring on this. And I think if we took that snap ring off, this bell will slide down enough that might expose something else. I don't know, <clears throat> but I'm not gonna take it any further apart than that because <clears throat> all I did want to do was clean the grease, right? So all this is ready to go. I'm gonna pack some grease into this rubber seal and start putting this jewel back together. All right, look how nice and pretty that is. All clean, freshly greased, nice and tight. Okay. Took my wife and I like a half an hour to get that snap ring out and then another half an hour to put it back in. And we joked about, boy, I sure hope we didn't leave any parts out. I left the part out. Damn it. All right. Jesus, it's after 10 o'clock at night. <clears throat> so I just couldn't do this by myself again and didn't want to call the wife because it was too hard. So I made this like I should have done in the first place. And I, I just finished. Get this off. There, it's in. Finally. Now we can get back to putting this thing together. So <clears throat> there are some witness marks that occurred just from natural stuff. And if you could see right there, there's three little rust marks. So we know where those go. One, two, three. So there's my witness marks. There's also a pin that goes there. So that's a piece of cake, right? I'm gonna put this in the vise. And uh, then we just have to figure out um, this guy here. We'll see if we can find some rust marks on that. All right, man, it's about 20 to 11. I'm calling it a night. I got this guy put together. Um, and it's more or less in the right place because of those witness marks I had with those rust marks on that. Um, this has got the locator pin that goes right here. All right. So that's in place. Um, I don't think the seal is gonna work here anymore uh, because it's stretched out. And I don't 
I just don't know if I'm going to be able to make that thing work. I don't, I don't even know where it goes. Uh, inside or on the surface. I think yeah, it goes on the surface there. So there's a very strong likelihood that this gasket here, this O-ring is a waste of time. So I might just pack it full of grease and let the grease do the seal. But I've had it, man. It's, uh, it's ready for the new solenoid and then we can assemble it.